Hello and welcome to Video Analytics 101. Today we're talking about gate recognition. What is gate recognition? Well, let me show you. So gate recognition hasn't been talked a lot about in our industry so far. Uh, it's not around for a long time, but there are some trials going on and I'm sure you will hear more about it in the future. So let's cover it today. What is gate recognition? Gate recognition is the process of identifying a person by the way they walk. Turns out that when you walk in the street, you're just strolling along, the way you walk uniquely identifies you. Uh, when I heard it for the first time, I was pretty surprised. It's really the same thing as like a fingerprint or iris scan or facial recognition. Just the movement, the way of walking uniquely identifies you. It's actually kind of mind boggling. And uh, you would think that this opens up a range of possibilities of how to identify people in the wild on the streets, but it's not being used a lot. And the reason for that is that there are a bunch of limitations, but we'll come, come to that later. First, uh, I'm gonna show you how this actually works. So the way gate recognition works is by, um, by first extracting a skeleton of people. A skeleton really is uh, is to identify the different limbs, um, like the head, the upper body, the two arms, legs, uh, feet, and, and, and hands. And once you have extracted these skeletons, then you can analyze the way they move and analyze movement. This is actually being done a lot. Sometimes it's done in, with other video analysis applications. It's being done in the uh, Kinect of the Xbox. So this is quite common but also requires a lot of processing power and a high resolution. But exact, essentially you're extracting a skeleton. And based on this movement of the skeleton, you're trying to identify uh, unique, unique feature points that are unique to a person's walk. There are different approaches, but uh, essentially they measure different points of the skeleton. One of them, for example, is a stride length. The length between the two different legs, if you make one step, Turns out the strike length is, uh, is pretty different between people. It's not unique by itself, but it's pretty different between people. Another thing is the, uh, the angle between upper and lower body. The, the way you hold your hands when you're walking is also pretty different between people, it turns out. And there are a few other things. So for example, the, the shoulder width is different for everybody um, and, and some other things. It, it's, it's also the, um, the, the length of the arms itself, is the length of the legs. So where your hip is in relation to everything else and a few other things. And based on these things, you're calculating a so-called feature vector. So a feature vector is essentially a, a summary of all these kind, different kinds of features. And you're taking this feature vector and you're comparing it to a database of stored feature vectors. Those are the people you're looking for. And you, you calculate the distance between all these feature vectors. And you're looking for the ones that have the closest distance. The distance will never be zero because every image is different, obviously, but you're looking for something that has a very close distance. And if it's very close, it can be threshold, then you know this is the same person you match these people. Basically the same thing that you do in facial recognition or other biometric um, technologies. So what are the limitations of all of this? Well, for one, you need a very high resolution camera with high frame rate. Getting two at the same time is usually difficult. You either get high resolution or high frame rate. In this case, you need both because you need the high resolution to extract the skeleton and you need the high frame rate to analyze the motion. So having both is not very common and you need to deploy specific cameras just for this. Then camera angle is an issue. Well, if you, um, if you record a video at a camera angle that's different to the camera angle where, where you enroll people, then the ID might also change because the distance between uh, the angle, for example, the arms and legs will change, um, the, the length of the legs will change, the length of the arms will change. So if the distance is too, too difficult or too, um, too much, the angle of the camera is too much, then it also won't work properly. And finally, enrolling people is an issue. For facial recognition, it's pretty easy. You just take a, just take, um, a face, you enroll in the system, the face can really come from everywhere. But for gate recognition, you need a video of a person walking in order to enroll them. So this really limits your, uh, your possibilities on deploying this. And because of all of this, it's not being deployed a lot. There are tests right now, and um, I guess that in the future it will become more, um, but today it's not really the case. 
One final note, um, there is, it's very easy to confuse gate recognition with re-ID. Re-ID is the process of identifying a person and finding the same person in the same camera or in other cameras as well. This uses also feature vectors. This uses also um, the distance between feature vectors, but it uses the appearance of people, including the clothes. And if they change clothes, then this appearance will be different and you won't recognize the person anymore. Which essentially means that, um, that this is not a biometric technology. So re-ID is not biometric, but gate recognition is biometric because with re-ID, you cannot identify the same person when he or she walks in tomorrow, for example, but with gate recognition, you can. So while it might look similar, they are actually very different. Gate recognition is really a biometric technology similar to facial recognition where you uniquely identify a person. That's it. Thank you for watching. I hope gate recognition is a little bit more understandable now. Don't forget to subscribe and otherwise see you next time.